Next on our list uh, of cells to talk about are the immune system, are dendritic cells. So dendritic cells are what are we call professional antigen pre presenting cells. So they're really good at presenting antigen to uh, T cells and B cells. Um, so and the immature, gen immature dendritic cell precursors are produced in the bone marrow. So once again, you'd, you'd have something like a hematopoietic stem cell, let's say like this, that'll come into some sort of common um, myelinoid uh, or myeloid uh, progenitor cell. Then you might have dendritic cells that are produced from a variety of different types of cells. Like you might have a monocyte derived dendritic cell here or an interstitial derived dendritic cell from the lymph node of the spleen. Uh, you might also have what are called Langerhans dendritic cells from the lymph node or plasma cytoid derived dendritic cells um, from uh, plasma cytoid dendritic cell precursors. So th these dendritic cells can come from multiple different sources um, as we can see. So they are the most potent professional antigen presenting cells. Unlike macrophages and B cells, dendritic cells do not have to be activated to function as an antigenic or as an antigen presenting cell, which is very, very important. So they are very good at presenting antigen. They do not need to be activated. No activation needed. It's important to remember that. Now, they are covered with long, multiple long membrane extensions, similar to the dendrites that are seen on nerve cells. So these little dendrites here, if you were actually to look at an image, they would look kind of more like these long little extensions like this under a microscope, just many, many, many extensions like this. So this is just kind of a you know cartoon drawing and I'm a terrible artist. So this is what I have right here. Um, so they reside in the tissues and they kind of capture antigens uh, from invading pathogens, and then they load this antigen into uh, MHC class one and class two molecules. So we'll label that MHC right there. This is your antigen that has been loaded in. A little bad antigen, could be a good one too, but let's pretend it's a bad one. Um, and then the dendritic cells then migrate into the lymph nodes, which I talked about in previous videos, and they present these antigens to T cells, T cells, and they co-stimulate T cell activation. Um, one exception I want to mention before going into this communication here between dendritic cells and T cells is that there are what are called follicular dendritic cells. So they do not arise from the bone marrow and they don't function as APCs. So I'll put a little note down here. Follicular dendritic cells. Now, I encourage you to look these up just to understand them. So they're exclusively located in the lymph node follicles and they form important interactions with B cells in the lymph node follicles. I'm not gonna make a video on them, but I encourage you to look them up so you understand what they are, just in case you ever get asked a question on it, or if you need to know it. Um, so here I'm gonna talk about the interactions. So this molecule here is what we call, I'll do this all in white. You have your ICAM1, so ICAM1 interacting with an LFA, which is one of your co-stimulatory signals. You have your T cell receptor here, T cell receptor, your MHC molecule. Then you have what's called B7 here, interacting with the CD28, which is your second signal. And then you have CD40 interacting with CD40L here. And they also are releasing cytokines that bind um, to different receptors on the membrane. Then you also have here a receptor called CD, well, you have it everywhere, but let's just pretend that this is the ideal cell that we're looking at under a microscope. You have CD25 here, which then will in, induce, I should write that a little better, CD25, which will induce cell division, so it can neither become a plasma cell or an effector cell um, and that's stimulated by interleukin 2 but I'm going to talk more about the differentiation in a video on lymphocytes so all you need to know is that interleukin 2 is important for this division and that the, they can become either um, plasma cells or effector cells which I will explain what they are in another video